Do VTubers pay their taxes? Oh, well, 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 Abby, I feel like a lot of them don't have to. Well, yeah, it really comes down to how much money they end up making and like all the but they joke about evading taxes because they they know they won't get in trouble for it. We'll get into that. We'll get into like how that could possibly happen. Quick disclaimer. I just want to say that we are not accountants. We're not providing any official financial advice. Anything taken in this video should not be substituted for actual accounting advice. If you actually need help with that stuff, I suggest hiring a professional. However, before you do that, I just want to share a little story about the time I tried hiring an accountant because this might be something that a lot of people don't account for when hiring an accountant for content creation. I had a very bad tax year two years ago. It wasn't last year. Yeah, it was two years ago because I hired an accountant who did not understand anything about content creation. And right now, a lot of accountants, they don't really know what a VTuber is. So you have to make that argument of like, a, okay, I'm a YouTuber, but you have to say you're an animations channel for them to kind of understand it. Unless if this accountant knows what a VTuber is and understands like the ecosystem here, you kind of have to say that you're like a YouTuber, but like you do animations because then they'll get it. They'll be like, oh, that's why you have this art. That's why you're doing this and that and that and that. She didn't even understand like what a YouTuber was and I had to explain it to her. And so she wrote me down as like a videographer, which is not correct. Uh. And all the stuff that I should have written off were not written off because she's like, mm, well, that doesn't make sense for like a videographer's business. Like, you, you know, that doesn't really work for that. that. That's not like ordinary or necessary. Ooh. Granted, I'm a VTuber. So I had that nuance of being able to write off art. Like there were things I definitely knew I could write off and I, she just wouldn't let me. Oh. She messed up my taxes so bad because I got taxed severely. That's why I sat down to, to learn all this because I, I got nothing back. So if you are a content creator, make sure that this person actually has experiences with like at the very least a YouTuber. I paid like thousands of dollars because she didn't know what a YouTuber was. Oh, yeah, I was frustrated. Yeah. So do VTubers pay their taxes? Oh, <laughs> well, 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 Abby, I feel like a lot of creators who only do VTubing, if they like live with their parents and that's just like the gig they are doing, I feel like a lot of them don't have to because they don't meet taxable income. They joke oh, about evading taxes because they, they know they won't get in trouble for it. They don't have to. I have it written here on the slide somewhere, which I think is a couple slides down on how much money you have to like not make, I guess, to not qualify because have you, have you, have you seen a, a, a tax bracket, like the income tax bracket? I actually, I watched some videos about it this year because I, because I have to do taxes about how to like manually calculate it. I'm going to be for real, for real. Well, like what if we got married? That, I know it helps you, right? Uh, yeah, actually, <clears throat> surprisingly, there's like a lot of benefits to getting married in terms, but then. And there's also a lot of downsides to that too, but that comes to like how you fill out your W-2s and stuff like that. We're, we're not covering that in this stream, but I'll kind of talk about it a little bit. So these income brackets, US tax brackets are kind of interesting. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but specifically for the US, depending on how much money you make, that's how much you're eligible for taxes. And this is super confusing because if you noticed here, there's different percentages. And what's weird about these is like, you'll see 10% is $11,000 or less back in 2023. So right now, um, anyone who's filing their taxes is filing it for 2023. I also included 2024 oh. for this year. Ah. Mm -hmm. You see how the jump has changed? Last year, it was $11,000 or less. You could be taxed 10% of your income. This year, right now, this year, all the money you make, if you make over $11,600 or less, you can be taxed 10% of that if you're filing by yourself, if you're single. Uh, but that that's confusing because I feel like non-taxable income in most states, isn't that like 10000 This is specifically for federal. So this isn't oh, state tax. State taxes God. are different. <laughs> but you have federal, you have non-deductible federal. Better on state tax. No, or am I stupid? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you can get you can get them deductible for both, but we'll we'll get into that. Uh, so this is specifically for federal. This is where it gets tricky. So if you are single, which is none of us, am I right, Chad? <laughs> yeah, you're all. That's right. You're all married and stuff. Too, I'd imagine. Abby. These, these are the little brackets for it. Me, please. So you, <laughs> Abby's like to me, please, Chad. Come on, please. These brackets are important because of what we're about to go to next. So if you look over here, you have all these brackets, right? Let's assume uh, you have been a good noodle and you've been keeping track of like how much you've been making. Because again, when you're a content creator, you fill out something called a 1099. So it's not a W-2. So if you haven't received a 1099, that means you haven't made enough money yet. So you don't have to really worry about this. You're lucky. You're blessed. <laughs> 
But technically, you're supposed to report any types of incomes you make in the United States, like regardless of it being under the threshold of this or not. If yeah, you you're supposed to report it, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you're supposed to, but yes. But if you have made over it and you got sent something, they'll usually email it to you or they'll mail it to your house um, and they'll tell you how much you made. And this is hard because you can't predict how much you're going to make at the end of the year when you are a content creator. Yeah, the couple things. First of all, I know a couple of people are like, oh, it's not too complicated, but it is pretty complicated as like a content creator, performer, comedian. If you do any other side thing at all, that's that makes it really complicated because every transaction is separate. So like it's not you getting like a form from your employer, putting that in and you're done. The amount of things you have to report, like you might have had an ad deal 11 months ago and you might not have the receipt for it. So what do you do if you literally don't know the amount that you made from that at that point? Like there's so many other moving parts with that make the content creator taxes like just really just finicky. <laughs> Obviously, W2s are easy. You take a picture of it, you scan it, it fills in the blanks for you, you're done. And you know what? That kind of sucks for you because you can't write anything off. You can, but not a lot. You don't have- Yeah, but then room. you probably have more money. Actually, no, yeah. that's not true because depending on how you filled out your W2, you might still owe the government taxes if you didn't fill out your W2s correctly. Oh. It sucks because you, you're kind of dealt with an option where you could get a bigger paycheck every month, but you're going to owe taxes at the end of the year. Or you could get less money and then get an actual tax return at the next year when you go to file. That's why I said, like, if you have a W-2, we're not talking about that. We're talking about 1099s. Also, you can make big donations right before tax season. Like, like a bunch of famous people do a bunch of donations in December. It's like the season of donations. Yeah. Not just because of the holidays, but because it really helps you out in your taxes. Yes. It lowers your tax bracket, possibly. Anyway. People might say it's easy, but it's not. And that tells me you've never been a content creator. Like, you don't, you don't know, so relax. So moving forward with this bracket here, how much money should you be saving and putting aside when you are making money as a content creator? Well, I made a little tiny spreadsheet to kind of give an example. This is Becky VT's income. Okay, everyone wants to say hi to Becky. All right. She's a, uh, she's Becky's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. She's a uh, not really, she's not really smart with her taxes. So we're going to kind of look at, you know, her stuff. Let's say this is how much money Becky made per month. Some of you might be thinking this is a lot of money. Becky makes more money than I do. So, you know, I, I'm a little envious of Becky right now. She makes good money. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say, Becky makes some pretty good money, actually. This is considered the low end of the spectrum because I based this worksheet off of making $50,000 a year. This is just an estimate, by the way. Again, being a content creator, you're not guaranteed to make this every month. But let's say, like, you know, Becky ended up making... $50,000 from purely just content creation. Let's say like, you know, she doesn't have the W-2. She's a full-time content creator and she's made $50,000. So for the United States, you can Google what the standard federal deduction is, which I did for you already. Um, That is oh, wow. $13,850. So this money right here is the standard federal deduction. You subtract $50,000 from the standard federal deduction. You get $36,000. $150 of taxable income. This is money the government can tax you for. This is how much the government can tax you for. So remember how I said earlier, the bracket system. So right now, Becky is at $36,000. What tax income bracket is she in? She is under, she's under um, the 12%. Yeah. If she's filing single, because obviously Becky's single. So she would fall under the 12%. However, it's not as straightforward as, a, oh, she's just getting a 12% tax and that's it. No, that's not how taxes work. Oi, I'm sorry. I'm so confused. She made 50,000. Yes. But she's allowed to keep 13 to herself. No. Kind of. It's just the deduction. So she doesn't have to be taxed on 13,850. Yes. So she has 36,150 left. And then we're talking, when we talk about the rough tax es estimate, the first round and the second round. Yes. First of all, why are we deducting 11,000 there? Because that's the first threshold. And in America, when you hit a certain threshold, that's kind of how they calculate oh, your taxes. Oh, I see. So you're doing, you're doing, oh, okay. A certain, okay, okay. So out of the taxable income, mm -hmm. you still have portions of your income having different taxes on them? Yes. Oh, interesting. Oh, yes. I, sh I yes. should have known that. I think I did. Not study. a lot of people know I, I this. Google that. But I, I, okay, I get, I get it now. Damn. Okay. <laughs> it, no, it. This is act. This is genuinely confusing. I had to watch like a full um, 
I had to watch like a couple like different videos of people like explaining this because this is Me very too. confusing. And I'm so confused. But now I get it. Mari's so much better at explaining it. But here, I'm gonna move you, I'm gonna scoot you for just a second here. Um, you see how there's like a second round of taxes right here? So again, the first round of taxes is $1,100. The money that's left over from that is $25,150. That $25,000 is still taxable in the second bracket, which is the 12% one. And that equals $3,018. You can come back, Abby. And so in total, at this moment, Becky VT will pay in total $4,118 in federal taxes that's not including state that's not including social security and the state taxes that are very very uh there's certain thresholds depending on what state you live in every state is different and that sucks and this is her gross income becky probably had to pay bills throughout the year right probably not <laughs> Oh, or a oh, 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 real daddy, yeah. Which I hope so because uh, she's gonna need them. Because what if Becky didn't have to pay any of that? What if Becky could keep her standard deductible, like as Abby said earlier, and not have to pay us anything? What if Becky profited at a loss? Well, <laughs> this becomes my favorite part of the whole stream. And I can finally show people how to legally evade their taxes. <laughs> okay, wait, can, can one second, quickly. Uh, say sub, 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 sub. It'll make your button glow. Sub, 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 sub. Subscribe. Anyway, subscribe. So after you do numbers, you die and you yeah. Die. Well, here's the thing. Again, this is if Becky doesn't have any like deductibles or anything. This is just how much she's gonna owe if she just is bad at taxes. Oh, true, 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 true. Remember how we said earlier about the whole like, you know, when Abby was talking about how if you live with your parents and you just kind of VTube, it's like, you know, whatever, you're not making that much money. There is a good chance you might not, not have to pay any federal or state tax if your gross income doesn't exceed past that threshold for that year. Remember how I said earlier, a good rule of thumb is if you make more than $600, you need to claim that on your taxes. You have to. Like the IRS will find you one way or another. But my question is, are you having to pay like, when you show the chart earlier, the chart from before, that's just federal taxes and then she has to pay t state taxes on top of that oh oh this one yes this is your federal and then this plus whatever the state taxes plus your social security plus whatever stuff you gotta pay you know like property tax and all that stuff like your daddy <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, okay. I know a lot of us who are probably watching here this, you probably make more than 600. You're probably gonna file your taxes and you probably haven't done them yet. If you're like me and Abby, who's really stressed out about taxes because after stream, I get to spend the rest of my night doing my taxes because I don't make a lot of money as a VTuber. However, I still make enough that I have to report it. And it's really tedious because I don't want to be like Becky. I don't want to have to owe all of that. And it's a nightmare. So what can you do? Well, how about I teach you how to lower your income tax as a, as a not just a content creator, as a VTuber, because guess what, baby? We have so much luxury compared to just the normies. Oh, really? Yes, we do. Oh, I didn't know. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. However, I do need to say something that might upset some people. So, hobby versus business. You cannot get deductions for things that are considered hobbies, and you still need to pay taxes on income that are made as a hobby. So if you are V to as a hobby and you have still made a certain amount of money, you still have to pay taxes on that. Unfortunately, like that's just how it is. If you're Becky VT and you made 50K, you don't really wanna have to have that be your taxable income. You wanna lower that through deductions. Remember how I said the standard um, federal uh, deduction was like already kind of an estimate and like part of it? You can still get more deductions. And well, the way you do that is you are a content creator and you make this your business. This is your business. And it's not just something where you can just go up to the IRS and be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I totally do this for business. This is a very like serious thing. If the activity is carried out in a business-like manner, and if the time and effort you're putting into this activity is showing that you're trying to make a profit, then you are a business. Congratulations, you are now a business. Even though you are a cute anime girl online, you are a business, get business done. And I wanted to just say this real quick because I know a lot of people get really offended by this kind of stuff. There is no shame in creating content in the pursuit of making money. You are allowed to earn an income doing something you love. And a lot of people like to be all high and mighty towards content creators being like, your job is so easy. You just sit there and play video games and you blah, blah, blah. There is no shame in loving your job. 
And that is what makes those kind of people upset because they hate their job. Also, can we be for real? Like, once anything becomes a job, it's fun at times, but it, it will have a share of stress. It does. Yes, it absolutely <laughs> does. And a lot of people just kind of assume that content creators, it's all just play. And that's it. And it's not. It, there's a lot of things that we deal with behind the scenes and taxes is indeed one of them and yes it is a legitimate business you might be wondering how how can i look at this as a business well there's a couple of different things that the irs will look at to determine what if what activity you're doing is a business or not whether you're a youtuber an instagrammer a tiktoker v tweeter you know you're making money off of twitter or something whatever it is this is how you can kind of tell like you can like prove to the irs that you are a legitimate business you can show them how you've created a business plan for your YouTube channel. This is, it's not the best system, but this is technically a system. You're keeping track of your income per month and you can go even further by detailing exactly how much with like pay stubs. Another thing you can do is you can have advisors and tax professionals, which besides like um, lawyers or, or tax professionals or like accountants, there's like another thing you can have. They're called CPA and they can kind of help you like, you know, with- CPA stands for Amari. Huh? What does CPA stand for? It's just a type of accountant. It's like a, it's uh -huh. a certified public accountant. I know there's gonna be some people who are probably thinking, okay, well, how can I treat this as a business if I'm not making money? Well, guess what, Baka? You don't have to be making money to be considered a business when it comes to content creation. You can still write things off. You can still get deductibles because it is not uncommon to be in a business and not be making money. Okay, well, why does it matter? Like, why should I care about any of this? I just V super fun. Like, why should I care about any of this? And it's because for every Every dollar you make, you are literally paying 25 cents in taxes due to bad record keeping. The mindset of it is like, you're just throwing away money because you can't be bothered to keep a receipt. This is a quote that really stuck with me that I think might also stick with some of you too. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So it might look hard up front, but if you spend a little as a few hours to understand something and do it correctly, then you'll set yourself up for success going forward. If you are making money and you want this to be a business, if you want to be a full-time content creator, you need to treat this as a business. And that's scary. It's very scary for a lot of people. A lot of people think taxes and running this as a business is too complicated. It's too hard. It's too overwhelming. And the thing is, yes, it is. It might look very hard, but if you spend just a couple of hours with me and Abby, you know, and you start to like slowly understand things and you're setting yourself up for success. And that is a very big mindset. I want you right now, right now to say, I am a content creator and this is my business. You say it. I'm a content creator, this is my business. Yeah, congratulations. You are now a business. What can you write off when you are a business? You can deduct any expenses that are ordinary and necessary. What do those words mean? Well, ordinary means it's 